Alex, would you please give the blessing this evening? Father, as we look into the evening this evening, I pray that you would be with each who are present here, that their deliberations may be that which would fulfill the needs of our community and to deal for the, in the welfare of all of us who live here. For this we thank thee. Thus, we know that we live in a day of great change, and we do not know that which we will pass through. But nevertheless, we know that thy purposes will be fulfilled, and thou will bring forth in thy due time a kingdom of equity, of justice, and a fulfillment of all that has been promised unto the human family. We are told, again, through the scriptures, that we should not glory in that in our wisdom. We should not glory, O oh Lord, in our might and in that strength that you have allowed us, nor in the wealth that you have provided but rather that we should glory in that we know Thee and that Thy purposes will be fulfilled upon the earth and that You deal with, the, with Thy creation with loving kindness, with mercy and with, just, with justice and with righteousness, and that in these things you delight and desire that we likewise do. We thank thee, dear Heavenly Father, for the many things which you have granted unto us, and for the hope that you continually set before us. And this we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Alex. Is there any additions to the agenda? Yes, Madam Mayor. Yes. I'd like to do a strike number two. Do that. Under mail? Yes. And if there's any way to move number six to number one, without any inconvenience to anyone? Thank you. I want us to move number five to number two. Further. And I would like to call for an executive session to include council and Don under the police department, please. Session for um, council and Don and Chief and Sonny.
administration now. So we're moving the uh, allocation. Yes. yes. We have a petition before us from uh, Stafford County in regard to uh, Lakeview and Alley. It runs north and south between the courthouse and the annex building. And I think we had a representation from the county here to answer any questions on that. Do you have the information in your package? through there and now they're going to, have to either back all the way in from the south, it would be about impossible to you know, make the turn come from east or west to get down through there, so they just basically have to back up the alley. That's the reason we're doing this, so there won't be traffic down there. There's another dumpster right behind. The dumpster won't be in the alley, it won't be where it is. It'll be to the south. There's another downstairs that is behind the Garner's building that if they maybe went east west instead of north south. He didn't say, yeah, he just couldn't make the turn, he didn't feel, and if they you know, had to back up the alleys. I mean, they, they back up the alleys too, but they, he just, that's what they're doing. How many lines is running down the alley you now? Well, gas and electric, and then we'll, we'll still, still maintain the, uh, the uh, easement for all the utilities. But, uh, we don't have water there, but there's sewer and gas, and I'm not sure about this telephone. I think I read somewhere where they want to put a curb and gutter across there. Who's going to be responsible for if we have problems to uh, cross the curb and gutter? Maybe I didn't read that. I thought it was a good question. Curb and guttering. Are you guys putting curb and guttering down the alley? Uh, along the north side of the street, or along the edge of the street? Mm -hmm. Yes, we'd like to do this. Is that going to cross any of our lines, Mel? Or we'd have to. Are we talking about the Dari of curb and gutter on, are you talking about on 3rd Street? Where's the curb yes. and guttering? Yes. Go? Yes. Along the street. We've already got curb and gutter in there. I'm just, you're, yes. you're going to put it straight up and down? We're going to continue the curb and guttering as if there was no alley there. Okay. So it'll be a straight up and down curb? Yes. Yes. It won't be something that allows access. The, re the main reason for doing this is to, to deny traffic in there. We're concerned about people hitting the side of the building. We were going to have to put up a guardrail and post. And so the idea is to not have traffic in there. We won't have trash trucks bagging in there. That was our main concern, actually. And we won't have other traffic. So 
I think I understand what you're saying. The curve, 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 the I understand that you're straight up and down. The only other thing is that some people that aren't familiar with the alley, are you going to do anything at the other end to keep from, once they get to the annex from driving through, when you put up something to delineate? The yeah, I don't know exactly what that hasn't been discussed in great detail. But yeah, we, we'll make it, we, we will make it so that the alley is not accessible to traffic. Okay. Okay, but it'll be something that you could, in other words, if we have to get a bucket truck or anything, they could. I don't see why not. We have those um, things that you use to park out of the concrete. Yes, sir. I don't think you really have to put it on the property. property. Um, something like that. I, don't know. I understand your question. I think that, yeah, it could. but you're still wanting to be able to get in and out of the if it's necessary. What about fire? I think as long as we can get in back there, we'll be all right. evening, but I had referred to, you're limited to two garage sales, 
a year per household. That seems restrictive. The five employees per business on this uh, C1 area, I believe, or central. I mean, we want it to be, I don't know, we want it to be easy for someone to open a business with six employees instead of having that thrown at them and then go through a, I mean, I don't mind going through the, uh, the uh, special, use. special use permit. That's a good idea. We've added that, haven't we? But, but the, uh, what was the other one? You guys, anybody? I don't have it. I don't have a copy of it. That was that. But, but we do have them. We just don't have them with us this evening. And we'd like to, I don't know if the best one's number three. Return the proposed zoning regulations back to the Planning Commission. What do you do? Actually, actually oh, number four there, what you actually do, if you can tell us exactly what you're talking about, the council can okay this tonight with those changes. If you, if you know what you want changed, you can do that and approve it tonight. If you do not know that, then probably you need to go back to the planning commission. But they need to know specifically what what the issues are so they can work on not just a generalization. But we can, can we, if we approve this, can we go with number three? Can the council meet with the planning commission? to revise those items? Is that what that's saying? Or yes. Okay. And Kevin, I thought Bickley explained that um, five employees thing to you that you could apply for a special use. Oh yeah. It just it's just the idea of it being on the you know, strike one. Well do I borrow the money and, and do that special use permit? It just seems not friendly. You know, we'd like the front page, the cover page, to be friendly. Is my thoughts. But maybe I'm wrong. I agree. I'd like to see it more business friendly. I'll get four but explain minutes. yourself. Explain well, yourself. There's, on a, that. there's a lot of people that are also, you know, in a small town like this. If somebody wanted to start their start their own business, say say like Marshall, for example. Yeah. We've used him for, just to continue with that. But say he wants that. to move on. Yeah. And and go ahead and open his own shop or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, he's got to jump through hoops and get special permits just to do something in his own garage. From I mean, I, to me, I think we're over-regulating this. I mean, to the, but make it I, simple, not 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 where you got to go through a bunch of hoops and anybody. The the noise issues with anything. You can't leave your property lines. Dust can't leave your property lines yeah. if you're in, in, in the commercial side of it. That's almost impossible yeah. to have that happen and actually operate a business. It happens every day. Yeah, I mean, to me that just seems silly. I mean, and it's completely against the business side. Nobody's, nobody's going to open, would want to come in here and operate a business if, if you have noise across your your property line or dust from trucks going in and out across your property line and people consider it a nuisance. You're just going to have problems. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, yes. Mel, what would we, what would Marshall have to do right now with the regulations that we have? Would There's nothing that can be done right now. So he would absolutely not be able to do it. So by doing a special use permit, by adopting this and doing a special use permit, he's allowed to. As by not adopting it, he simply can't. Or by sending it back and eliminating it, we don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> and it may become more friendly. But at the same time, you don't want someone opening, uh, um, doing mechanics on the side or whatever, and have six cars piled up in the street <coughs> either that sit there for months on end. I think that's what they're trying to prevent. It's not saying that that's what he's going to do. But I think they've seen problems in other instances where that has happened. And pretty soon the vehicles don't get moved, and pretty soon they start 
looking junky and you know. Pretty soon, pretty soon it goes from two vehicles to ten vehicles, fifteen vehicles. So instead of looking at it like they're trying to put all these restrictions, I think what it's trying to do is just prevent some of the other, some junk from having junk, junk form. You know, it's like a two garage sale thing. I don't think that's a bad idea because if somebody has enough stuff that they have to have 20 garage sales in a year, then something's wrong. I don't want to get into business. Right? So what they have in their house and what they can't. Well, so I just said you brought it up. I know. So I'm, I'm just telling you. I don't want to get into that. That's fine. But I'm saying pretty okay. soon if someone has a garage sale every week, they're not going to haul their stuff in and out of their house. It's going to start sitting out in their yard. It's going to get junky. I mean, there's a reason why you limit it to two garage sales a year. And, and really, if you look at that, I mean, fall, spring, usually is when your garage sales hit. I mean... Also, there's a lot of a lot in there about uh, homeowned businesses, and I don't think that's what we ought to be doing. Explain to me what a homeowned business is. Is that somebody keeping books on a trucking company? Is that somebody running a pumpkin sales operation out of her house? You know, it needs to be. I think it needs to be more business friendly. Okay, so that's why I'm I'm really upset that you can sit here and say that, and you did not go to any of those commissioner meetings. That's I what I am upset the about. Committee. Yeah. I wasn't aware I could go. Bobby, don't you even say that to me. You, I told you, guys, you personally. You anything? It was open meeting. Bobby, I told you guys personally, when they started this, that council needs to be involved with that. Don't you even say that you guys didn't hear about this. That one probably didn't hear about it, and this one here didn't either. But the rest of you did. You most certainly did. John had told you the nights that they were held. So I am not okay. even going to use that. Whatever. But they so, spent many hours. So why weren't you there? That's your, that was your choice. And who was there? The, just the commissioners. I went one time. Yeah. And John and Mel. I feel like we, we appointed this committee to do the job that we didn't necessarily want, you know, it's a big, big job. And so this is who we, we appointed. And it's not our job to sit there with our thumb on their heads. You know, we need to approve what they, I trust them to do what's right. They live in our city as well, and they have for years. Oh yeah. But we did have the choice to go and sit through all that and voice our opinion. I remember being invited. When they first started it, we let council know what night they was having it, what time and where at, which is always right here. But I apologize to Mark and Troy. They had they had no clue, and they didn't. So back to the four choices. Do we want to return it? And have them, we'll go over it. Give us another thirty days. I guess I'll get with them and show them, them, show them how I want to remove. Now that doesn't mean they have to do it. That's right. I mean, and also too, you, you guys, got, there's got to be some give and take. Well, I think they've done a good job. They just, yeah, they have. We got the final draft, and that's what we found, and we voted it down. Okay. Is that right. fair? Right. I'll say, I say we. We only, we only so did three so things. Those, like those, two, those two things that you can think of at the moment? Yeah. I think I've got notes. From the last I've got notes in mine. Oh, I think I wrote I'd rather not approve it with the revisions. Phyllis, or Dorothy, or Mary, would you guys like to speak or say something? Well, I would just say that we did work very hard. And we will well. We did put in a lot of hours going over it. And I would also say that I believe everybody on the zoning board has probably lived here longer than any of you. And so we do have a vested interest in St. John. We all own homes. 
we all care deeply about maintaining St. John. We're not beyond listening to your, oh, your concerns, your questions, concerns. and working with you. So you'd be okay with number three, where we return it to the proposed zoning regulations to the planning commission for 45, 60 days, something like that? No, Kevin. It says for, okay, the, next, it says for the next regular meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, I no. want to interrupt you because if, right. you know we, if we don't move forward with this, mm -hmm. we are in the old zoning book. Oh, yeah. We can and move then, to the then it gets meeting. put on this guy's shoulders to be the bad guy. November 1st. That's not the When's their next regular meeting. Regular schedule meeting. That's not the regular schedule meeting. When, when is your next regular schedule meeting? The 21st. We, we only meet, we meet usually on the fourth Monday if we have something to do, but we don't meet if we don't have business. So, so we could meet on the fourth Monday of this month? We could be, as far as I know. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Good 24. I don't think we will say we need to what time does it look? We meet at 6. Yeah. Well, that is no. the 4th. What's the day of that? Is that the 4th? The 4th Monday of this month? This is the 24th. Madam uh, Mayor, okay, if you want to have to have Yes, Don. You might want to call Bickley and see when he can be here. That's right. Time. Yes. So, why don't you schedule a meeting and then notify? It probably won't be until November. That's, that's, that's what I was looking at. That's what we're going to discuss in about less than a week's time. Madam Mayor? Yes. And we could get our propose changes together and send it to him and then he can bring it to us you know the next day or two. Do those proposed changes have to be approved as changes by the whole council? Well and then or, sorry, go ahead. I mean yes. Go ahead, John. Um, well there's a couple of ways to look at it. Again like I said the last time if you approve that, that doesn't mean it's etched in stone. If you find things that you would like to have changed, it can be changed. Or you can go back to the zoning board and let them and meet with them. But if you send it to Bickley, Kevin, without talking to them ahead of time, that's not really fair either. So I think we don't want to send anything to Bickley until you guys have had a chance to visit with the commission to do that. So, I mean, there's there's a couple of ways to do that. Number four. And I think if, you know, if you met with the... Number four means that you would um, approve it as it is with certain changes, and you have to specify those changes. So you can either do number three, send it back to them for their next meeting, which would not be to November, and then they, you can meet with them, and then you can bring it back to the table for approval. Well, I'll make a motion to do number three. <coughs> I'll second that motion. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. Oh, aye. no, wait a minute. In that motion, you have to specify your council's concerns, okay? So, right. That's what I'm it needs to be written in the minutes, so I need to know exactly what it is that your concerns are. Uh, that's why we just went through this reason we couldn't do number four. We don't have exactly that. Well, that calls for ordinance numbers, but if you just specify C1. your concerns so. on, I, like what you were saying earlier. You just can't put the thing business friendly and let it cover that. No, no, that that's not that's not specific enough. Okay, because they can't really work with that. It's done. But do number five. That oh, I didn't see it back there. My bad. They can get their ducks in a row. There you go. And bring it back. Okay, I apologize. I apologize. I okay. my motion. I okay. motion to do number five. I'll second that. And then the emotion. Yes. Uh, I noticed that there was so much. I did. And you're wondering if anybody had any citizens' comments regarding this? Actually, this, uh, they can't speak unless they're, called, unless they're on, uh, sponsored by Caltech on this. On anything we have. 
it's the code of procedure when you go to the so. They're welcome to come to the commissioner's meeting, zoning commission meeting, and state what they need to state. Okay. So they're sponsoring everybody right now. Right. Okay. But they're welcome to come to the zoning That's board. Right. Before Friday noon, Friday noon. Yes. Okay, so we're going to propose, you're going to table the proposed ordinance until November, what's the first Tuesday? First. Wait a minute. First. Well, that's what you're looking at, number five on. That's the motions. Our meeting. Do we need to include? I would say, can we do it after their, yeah. can we delay it until after their meetings and go over things with them? Okay, so and then on, come back to it. on this motion, I need to have a date and time. Is there a way we can get a, get them to have a special meeting on this? Well, well that's the matter. What's the meeting? Okay, these perhaps the meetings are already set. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What night? Yes, Don. November fifteenth, probably be better. That way, yeah. Uh, that's the November the fifteenth. That's a Tuesday. That's a Tuesday. That'd be two. That'd be three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If they have, if these gentlemen have uh, suspected changes or proposed changes, if they could get them to maybe let Bickley review them and then get them to the planning commission and they can discuss them. If Bickley can't be here, they can just have a meeting and discuss them. Maybe you can email them and give them comments on, on pluses and minuses of it. Uh, and then I'll turn to if he can't get out here. But it would be better if he was here. Right. It'd be much better if he was here. So, 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 okay, so we'll put down the 15th or regular meeting night. <coughs> I'll check with Bickley and the Zoning Commission and see if we can get a meeting together prior to that. Okay. Is that what you want? Yes. So we have a motion on the table. I need a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. Thank you, Council. Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, the zoning board has a comment. What? Were, were you asking about your meeting on the 24th? No, we were just talking. We were going to meet sometime before the 15th. Right. You, do you prefer we do it. Yeah. You prefer that Monday, the twenty fourth? Well it'll depend on what the visit calls it. Whatever. Um, okay. Well we'll we will let council know when that is when they meet. Okay? Okay. You will contact Yes. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Okay.
that was brought up was the difference between A and B. Is it, I mean, I just glanced over it. And okay, what's A and B? Okay, here's what I gave them today. They had the original one in oh, the Oh, okay. And then this is what they got today. Okay. So if you want to use these to be able what to refer with Okay. Them. What it is, is on the fifth page, item number 10 is the difference. And it's the limitation of liability. And this is something that was uh, brought up by Mr. Mappenberger. And it depends. Our standard verbiage, in fact, isn't either one of these. It was C that I said <laughs> later on today. Oh, you <laughs> Yeah. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. That's, it would be D. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, no, no, that's the, okay, I guess that's C. Yeah, that's C. Our standard yeah. verbiage limits our liability to the amount of our contract. Okay, Don thought, felt that. No, John said that. No. It was the very last thing that it I said. the last page that I gave you. And, said, and, and I, I just. These that are the same. You want me to explain it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. The original contract limited the, the liability of the engineering firm to the amount of their fees. Uh, the recent city attorney's meeting, I had a conversation with the city attorney for our meeting, and he was always upset about this common language in an engineering contract. So I discussed it with Don, and we agreed that since uh, they are doing all the work that there should be more skin in the game than just their fees if something goes wrong. And so the skin in the game is they've agreed to assume responsibility for the entire contract value as a, that we agreed to that being the, the extent of their liability would be the full amount of the contract should something not work, should something go wrong, should the city be sued or whatever. I mean, we're hiring them, so they should have just as much skin in the game as we're required to have. The other change I asked it to be made, uh, the original contract that was sent out did not include a provision which um, made it contingent upon us receiving the money. And I did not want to sit here and pay for a full contract value if we did not qualify for the loan in the city. So there's a contingency clause in there that says that if if we do not qualify for the loan, we're only going to be liable for the engineering fees up to the amount of it, based on their time that they've spent. That's all we're going to be liable for. So, is that fair or something? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Well, has one And so, the, the, the terms you have here on the on paragraph A is the extended version where they've agreed to extend liability. That's section 10 on page 5 of 5. Uh, that clause on under sample A basically says that they're agreeing to the liability to the extent of their contract value instead of just their fees. Okay. And that would be my suggestion. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Another reason this was brought up was that Don had asked about if the city did some of the inspection as opposed to us doing it all. Is there's a line item in our contract for doing the inspection. And if I've checked with KBHE, as long as your inspector is qualified, they will allow it. And I would have no problem with the Mel would be qualified. Um, they will not reimburse for expenses, though. You will not, you know, if, if, if let's say you decide you want to make Mel a full time inspector. You could not include his any of his expenses in the loan. That would all come out. So, uh, so that's part of the reason. You know, if Mel is the inspector, then I can't be responsible for what he. Had. If, if it's my inspector, then I will accept responsibility for it. So that's one of the reasons you have three different versions of that line. Everything else is the same between the contracts. Uh, in this big package, the, I guess it was number C, yes. that is there for KDHE. I have, you know, if you want to include our fees in your loan, that has to be part of the contract. 
it really has no effect on you. What it says is that I can't discriminate if I hire somebody or I can't take bribes from the contractor. Basically, what it's doing is saying that I got to be a good guy. And, and, you know, and, and in effect, it protects you, but it really doesn't you know, affect you that much. So, so that's what that section is. We talked about this contract in those regards that I guess if you look in the in the fee schedule the the amount that the city would save in probably inspection I think that's at sixty bucks an hour is that the right my reading right? Yes I think that would be right yeah uh, the inspector would only be sixty bucks an hour and I think the fact that they're assuming full responsibility under the contract uh, is well worth the, the little bit of savings you'd have if you could inspect so and, and I'll say, to go along with that, even if you had Mel or somebody that you want to do as your inspector, I most likely are going to have to send somebody here to do like quantity counts, uh, do pay estimates. I mean, I don't mean the Mel can't measure pipe, but, you know, we get together with the contractor and, okay, you've installed this many feet of pipe, you've done this many square yards. We do that every month. And because I have to send in the pay estimates to everybody, and so you know, just it's not going to you know you're not going to eliminate our expenses completely even if you did that. But I would agree with Don. Um, and as long as I've been doing this, I've only ever had one job that that the city was the inspector on. But in simple terms, explain with five, the section five on that deal. Oh, uh, plans, everything is the way oh, I understand it. It's all is, yours. <laughs> it's not owned by us. Oh, yes and no. The reason that is there is to protect everybody. Because what's happened is that, let's say, and I always think of on this as a sewer lift station. We design a sewer lift station for you. Get it built, 10 years down the road, you decide, I need another one out here in the, on the other side of town. We're just gonna use these same plans. And we got Joe Schmo out here to build it. And we just go build it according to those plans. Well, these plans, the first set of plans, were designed for a certain set of conditions. They may not be the same as the second set of conditions. And they may not work the second time around. I don't want you coming back and saying, you designed this and it didn't work out here, it's your fault. And so what we're saying is, these are our plans for this conditions, this is for this here, and we don't want you using them on something else. Or what we've had recently is that we did all the, the design, not the design work, but all the setup work for a little town, and then another engineer came in and says, I could do this cheaper than they are They're doing it if I use all their stuff. Well, this particular city went with this second guy, and he used all of our information. Well, sure, he could do it cheaper. But didn't, didn't they pay the, the fees for that information? No. We did a, a preliminary study for them, and that's all they paid for was a preliminary study. And... But the city will then. But yes, you'll 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 get all the drawings you want. Yes, you can use them for anything that you want. It's it's just really to keep them from being used for something they're not intended to be used for. Because they have to sign off on them personally. I have a professional and engineer stamp that has to go on everything, and I have to stamp and sign it. So it's your battle the life. Yes. You know. Yes. Oh, like copyright, right? Yes, that's, that's well, right. I, I mean, we wouldn't do it, but what I'm saying is, if we if we pay to have all this done up, mm -hmm. and say we decided to go with somebody else, we've still paid for all that documents. I mean, just because you want to hold all them because that ensures your job, that ain't right either. No, I mean, we pay for the fee. Right. You're not going to use my stamp with somebody else. Well, that might be right. But what we, I'm saying, we though, will be in court. Yeah, people you try that. that. Yeah. Well, you're using his work product. That's his work product. That's just like your fertilizer out on somebody's ground. 
That's his time and his work product. He's entitled to the compensation for yes. his work product. Right. But I'm just saying any plans or anything else like that would be the city's. The, pl the, plans, the plans are available to the city, they belong to the city, but no, we can't use them. We can't use them again with another engineering with, Yeah. Understood. We could use them without an engineer. No, you can't. No, you can't. We just can't hold him responsible. No. 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 They're his plans. If, I, if my name is on it and you use it without my consent, yeah. we'll all it's be copyright. in before it's, you know what happened. It's now. copyright, Kevin. It's the law. Yeah. And, and KDHE has to have my stamp. If I designed all of this, we got it all done, I sent it into KDHE and I didn't stamp it, you can't do a thing with it. You can't touch it. You can do anything until I stamp it and sign it. I mean, that's just the law. Then if something is not right, then it then it's my comes fault. back on Don. Yeah. That's the reason we changed the liability laws. Yeah. yeah. If something's wrong, I can come back on him. Yeah. Yeah. And I have no problem with that because if something's wrong and it's my fault, you want to correct it. I want to correct it. Yes. I will work to do whatever it takes to make it right. Right. Whether or not we have a contract or not. Right. That's just the way we do business. We're going to make it right. No different than. Now, one of the, 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 the very one. last line on that list, that number 10 is that it's limited to knowledge available when the contract is signed. That means, like, let's say we design this nitrate plant for 20 parts on nitrate. A year from now, you have a well, like a little wacko, and all of a sudden you've got 30 parts of nitrates. You can't come to me and say, whoa, this has changed and it's your problem. Yeah, you know, that's something that I didn't know, nobody knew. I'm not going to take liability for that. You know, I will do, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll figure out what we think is a reasonable number to design for, and you know, that's what we will go with. Or, I've had this happen, the city have knowledge of a problem that they don't bother to tell me about. And then when we get there, all of a sudden, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you tell me? So again, if, if, you're, if there's a problem that you know about that you haven't told me about, then I can't be liable for that problem. Okay. Yes, Tom. At some of the late meetings this last week, they were some of the roundtables were discussing that the EPA might be looking at five parts per million yeah. instead of the ten. But how low will this how low will this plant take it down to? Four is what right now is what my limit is or where I where I have been going to. You know, that's something again that we can go lower than that. It's if you get much lower than four, your price starts going up considerably. I d I didn't know if we yeah. were gonna be the future might be somewhere in five if they change that then we're all gonna be in trouble. What I'm doing to allow for that is in every plant that I've done except Belpre, I don't know if you remember at uh, Lewis, there's room on the east end of those tanks. That I can, we can add another tank or two. And that's what, what I will do here is that we will put in, I don't know, four tanks, let's say, but there's going to be room that if at some point in the future you have to do something else, all we do is stick on another one or two tanks and you go on. It's not, you're not starting all over. Yes, sir. Yeah. He says you can go down to four. You said you can go down to four. But does that matter if it's going in at 20? If it's going in at 30? Well, it's, that's what we set design parameters. And how that's determined is really it's the contact time going through the vessel. If you want to take it from, from 30 down to four, you, the water has to spend more time going through those vessels. And so that's why, that's a number, that's a set of design parameters that we have to decide at the beginning what it's going to be. And then that determines how big those vessels are. So you haven't said that yet? No, like I say, you know, what really, Mel and I really haven't even talked about. But what I, and this is a number that has been changing. When I started Belpre, my income, incoming was set at 16. 
than in Lewis was 18 and Goodman was 20. Because I'm seeing higher nitrate units than what we originally thought it was going to be. And so that's, that's a number that's going up. But my four coming out has always been the same. I read somewhere that we have the opportunity to withdraw. Yes, it's, it's in there. Pay you in full to within seven days. Yes, the, uh, section number nine. nine. Make either one of us maybe ter may terminate the contract with seven days' notice, and if that happens, you pay us to where we are at that point in time, and we both go on our own money. Where, where are we at money wise right now? Oh, I have to. I don't have all the invoices right here. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. nineteen thousand three dollars. I just signed it tonight. Well, that's one. To that's, have we? I don't think that's the total, Kevin. Yeah. Is it? There's been other. Oh yes. Yeah. We paid nineteen hundred tonight, and it said as of. No, wait a minute. You said nineteen thousand. So is it nineteen thousand oh, or nineteen hundred? We paid nineteen hundred this month. Okay. The total at the end for the whole job is a run total of nineteen thousand three dollars thirty six cents. Okay, and and the, and whatever that yeah, I'm assuming you're correct because I, I don't. Well, but it's yeah, uh, it is that will come on off there. of or be credited towards the amount that's in this contract. Yes. is and survey is a not to exceed number if you know if we have uh, a surveyor you know if they can get the job done and, and it's 20,000 20,000 is all you pay if it's 40,000 30,000 is all you pay that's a maximum number it will not go over that but it can be less than that same way on the construction observer if if we get a contractor in here that really gets with it and gets this job done in half the time, then you only pay half the inspection fees. You don't pay the whole thing. <coughs> Are them a bid on job too also? Pardon? Are them bid on too? What? The surveyors and everything else? No. Or is that a bid deal? No. There's, we have surveyors in our company that we just bring to do that. Okay. What's going on in St. John? Somebody's calling their state legislator and got a whole big uproar going. You know, if you guys aren't for this project, if you don't want to do it, tell me now because I have other things that I will move on to. You know, if you're not behind this 100%, we just as well all go home. There is no reason to have to 
to answer, or and I, don't, and I don't mind answering questions, but I don't want to have to go through this every time I come. Just tell me what you want me to do. Very well said, Don. I agree. No, really, I think I think some of you are just pity patting along here and dragging your feet. Well, that's our job. No, no it's not. I mean, what no we one. think is completely unprofessional. Very unprofessional. We Business. Are. It is. This is a business. And it's embarrassing as a council that we can't get things done. And it's because nobody's on the same page. That's why well, we're here. No one, no one is here. Okay, I have really. a question. Do you not trust this guy? Answer me. Yes. Do you not trust this guy, Bobby? No, I trust him. Do you not trust yeah. him? Yeah. But just why? because you don't trust him. Just because when you trust somebody, you don't trust somebody, doesn't mean you don't question what you say. And that's fine. I there's nothing. Nobody's wrong. sitting in here calling him a liar. Nobody's saying he's ask, cheating. We're All we're doing is asking questions. I have no I problem that's what with we're asking here questions. Because yeah. you answered questions for six months for us. We're getting ready to spend three point one million dollars. That's a lot of money. And it is a lot of money. I it agree with that. It's not, I think we need to take our time. I want to yeah, explore every avenue possible. We have. We have. I don't know whether we have or not. So what's another avenue? I don't know. See, there you go. You have no answer for me. Yes, you play your cards. Yeah. And so how long are you going to play your cards? I don't know, but... Oh, my God. So you think they're going to go away? I just the nitrates are going to go away? I just don't think this town can afford $3 million. Okay, so you're answering Don's do question. It. You're answering his question. That's right. So be forward with it. So the, the vote... Last time meant nothing. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Uh, we were on the path to see the interest rate, see if you're going to get a loan, right? Is that where we're at? Not him. Us. Right. We are on a path, chosen, 5-0, to go see if that money's available. No, I told you. That money's, money's available. available. The money's available. That's not a question. I, I sent that information at some point in time. They've been holding that money for us, Kevin. Oh, and you have until the end of this month to get the preliminary <laughs> engineering report in if you want that money. That's it. that's when KDHE cuts. They start allocating money. And the end of the end of October is I have the preliminary engineering report done. I I have not sent it in because I wanted to wait till tonight. And because they've been holding this money, if we decide not to go through with this, we probably will never get another chance to. They, we will be. You're not going to get help with it. John will never be looked at again under consideration for probably any kind of a, a loan forgiveness or grant. I mean, it just puts a black mark. It, it, on our and even as, aside from that, the way the federal government is cutting programs right now. I'd have no guarantee that there's going to be a grant program a year from now. Yeah, there may be, I don't know. But the way they're cutting, I sure wouldn't guarantee it. Yes, Don? The only other option, if you don't go with this loan, revolving loan, and with the loan forgiveness, is to go out and get a bond issue if you have to do this, which you're going to have to do something. But if you go out and get a bond issue, you're going to be paying, you're not going to have a 30% loan forgiveness, and you're not going to, your interest rate on a bond is probably going to be one point, maybe two points higher on interest. Now, there are some of my fees if you do that, I'll cut out probably $50,000 worth. But you're going to lose $700,000 of loan forgiveness. So it's, you know, whatever you want to do. I really feel like we need to look at we need to look at it as a whole and look at what happens if we don't have the water quality in this in this town for, in the future. I mean, we're not going to get anyone coming here. They're going to be moving out faster than we can count. If we don't have water, we can drink. 
And that's the big issue. And we've all said there's nothing we can do. The nitrates are going to go up. I mean, we've decided all this. We now this is just this is just one more step. I don't understand what the issue is. I mean, we've agreed to hire Don and his engineering firm. We've we've agreed to move forward and progress with this. If if we don't, I mean, I don't know. I I'm just. Well, Bobby, what you said is 100% correct. This is a big project for you, and, and you need to feel comfortable with it. What do I need to do to make you feel comfortable? Well, I'll tell you, I'd like to see us go down there to that, well, it's pretty high in nitrates down at the Pinocchio Wells, what I'm going to refer to, the one on the east side down there. And drill a test well at 105 foot, see if that's good water there, the same thing as it is in the industrial park. Okay, but there you go again. You're spending more money. I realize that, Jim. And you're slowing the process down. I realize. I mean, we can test and test we and can test. That's right. I mean, that's all yeah. we've been doing. And we found good tests. But how long is it going to stay that like that? Five years from now? Look at the neighboring town to the west. And what the interest is in three million or five years? Okay, but what's it going to cost in three years to build this sucker? Or five years? I mean, it's you're not going to have the money for the government. Yeah, you don't. When you're when you're gambling, you don't look at the down the road deal. You look I do. Today. You guys are, and you do too. Don't be telling me that. And that guy is sitting on the end does too. Right. One other deal is. It, what's that? Taking this loan from the government looks like to me Kevin Davis is dumping his burden on the oh. entire United States. I mean, if you don't take that money, somebody else is going yeah, to. That's a poor attitude. Can you not see the whole picture? That's not a poor attitude, there's, there's Kevin. Probably somebody that needs it. We do. I'm not sure about. That. I can't believe you just said that. We need it. We can't afford it not to do it. I don't know. <clears throat> we can't afford not to do this. If we don't do it, and a year from now you want to do it, the, the city of St. John is going to be in the red big time. Period. And you can put that in the paper, sir. And it's a fact. I wish the people of St. John would wake up and listen, we have to do something. The money is available to us. Even if it cost a million bucks, you still probably would be sitting here dragging your feet. <clears throat> the money is available to us. It's not going to be next year. It's not going to be in a month. So if you wait, you're just paying more. You're just increasing your costs. And you already know that. Because two years ago, we could have done something. And we chose not to. Am I right or am I wrong? No, I think that's right. I don't I'm very right. right. I wish Jim Lakey was sitting here. What well, do you guys ever learn? Jim Lakey, parts? Tom Garner, or Becky Thrasher. I wish they were sitting here because I think they would back me. brought any viable alternative here. I mean, if there's another alternative, I'd like to see it. I really would. I'm not happy about having to pay more money, just like anybody else in the city. But, to be honest, I mean, sitting out there, when I wasn't on the council, to watch the council drag its feet for so long, it's frustrating. You know, so... I hear it all the time, people come into the library, and I'm sure you guys hear it too. All of you. People are frustrated, they want to know, they're not happy with what we have to do. But they're also not happy that we're not doing anything. So I mean, if anybody else has got a viable solution, I want to hear it. I don't have a problem. You live in the city, you live in the city and you, 
help pay for things. That's part of living in the city. Whether it's Wichita, Kansas, Maxville, Kansas, any St. John, Kansas, you live in the city to help the city move forward. That's part of living in the city. I feel like all the questions that I've gotten from you are not new to me. Mm -hmm. I've right. been to other cities and got the same questions. I have never, at this point in time, had anybody come up with a, like you said, a, a viable option that fits your needs better. There are other options out there, but they don't fit what you need as well as what we have proposed at this point in time. I don't know of anything else that is fit, will fit you better. And if you go out and research it, that's what you'll find. I mean, I've looked and looked and looked, and everything Don's been telling us <coughs> is what we need. I mean, you know, after that meeting the other night, when people were coming up with different thoughts and ideas, I thought, well, <coughs> let's go look. So I did. I spent many hours trying to find something it all came back to what Don's been saying. Now, I'm not trying to sell you this because I want a job. I'm trying to sell you this, not to sell, but trying to, because I think it is the best thing for the city of St. John. You're going to have to do something with your water. You will not have a choice. And I know you don't believe that, but if you want to talk to KDHE, that's fine. They will explain to you what's going to happen. If you, you know, if you decide tonight we're not going to do anything, they're not going to be here tomorrow knocking on your door. But at some point in time, they will be. And, and it will take a while, but they will find you. They have the ability, the legal authority to do that, and they will do it. And when that happens, you won't have a choice. You will have to do something. And it will cost you a whole lot more down the road than it's going to cost you now. Pretty Perry. Call Pretty Perry and ask them about their situation. Can you enlighten us? Yeah, Mary, what was the name What was the name of the John? At the American State Bank. Real Study? Oh, Rosemary. Rosemary. Mm -hmm. Pretty Perry did not do anything. Um, and they got fined every day. Call them and talk to them. And what was their answer? And what did they do? Or have they moved forward? With I am not 100% sure on that. Well, she must be working on their loan application. The way yeah. she was talking, yes. she was working with them at that time. Yeah. At one point in time, Pretty Prairie got so bad that KDHG wouldn't even deal with them. They made Pretty Prairie deal with the federal EPA. But I, I, I haven't done anything to do with it. I don't really know. I know they got fined big time by the, by the day. So we're looking at a compliance issue. We're looking at it from a health standpoint. We're looking at it from a community development standpoint. It doesn't make sense to not do it. I totally agree. We will have to have There's no doubt about it. Is there, what I'm wanting to know, is there a way, before we spend $500,000, basically is what this contract binds you to, well, for your services, is there a way to get a better cost of our actual bids and actual cost before you have to go, before we have to sign a contract to this extent? And still meet all the requirements, I mean, get in there, like I said, I, I don't have a, I know we're going where we're headed. We're going to end up having yeah, that point. There's no way. So you're talking about this? Are you talking better? Nitpicking that? No, I want to. Know, I want to know bids instead of just sitting here going. You know, he's saying this. He these said, are high. He he's saying these are high. Draw the plans, write the specs in order to bid it out. Is that yeah, and you'll pay what comes in on the bids. It may not bear have nothing to do with what I have here. Well, I know, but that, that's all I'm trying to figure out is get a more accurate on the cost as far as actual bids. 
Yes, Don. Or do we have to go um, clear through this to do that? You're going to have to go through at least the design phase to know actual numbers because they send those bid documents out. They need to know that a contractor is not going to bid on anything unless they have the plans. Right. That, I'm, I'm not know. denying that. I'm just asking, do we have to go but once you do, as far into this? If you go out and you done. let if you let that bid, yeah, then you've got, you've got to accept the lowest bid, am I not? If you accept any bid, yes. Yes. yes, Troy. Yes, you we can't do. refuse to bid. I mean, you could yeah. you can refuse all, them. Any and all bids, refuse them. Yeah. I mean, you'd have the option, and so what you'd have, what you would have, skin in the game, you're going to have his design fee, which is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You're going to have that skin in the game at that point, and you're going to have the thing bid. At that point in time, you will know how much it's going to. You will have the bids in, and you will know the exact dollars it's going to cost. That okay. you will know the exact dollars. Before you have to sign the contract with it, with anybody that's going to do the bid, and I'm going to do this to save you money. It costs me money, but I will. I do these projects to save you the most money. The easiest thing for me to do would be to write put everything into one contract. I advertise one time. I have one contractor that I work with. It's easy, but that costs you a lot of money because. The water, water well guy, if he's going to be a sub to a, a general contractor, the general contractor is going to add 10% on to his. And he's not necessarily going to take the lowest bid. He's going to take who he wants. I will advertise the water well work separately. I will pre-bid the nitrate removal equipment. I don't want a contractor picking the equipment that you get. All, all I was asking was if we have to yeah. sign for this whole amount tonight to get to that point. Is all I was asking. Okay. Again, the only thing on there that you would have to pay is going to be the design fee. If you get to the, if we open bids and my numbers are half what the bids come in at, and you say we just can't do this, then none of the rest of that uh, that we have not occurred in, you know, expenses. You know, I mean, I'll have already done the survey. You'll, you know, so you pay, but the, the construction observer, no. If he had never showed up here, I don't care what contract says, I'm not going to pay you. Okay, that's all I was asking. One other question. Sure. I, what do you think is included in a $460,000 bill? Okay. 1,600 square feet. Okay, and that's a good question. Okay. That includes all the electrical, the controls, the the uh, the pumps, the piping. You know, we run. We bring pipes in under the floor, up through the floor. All that piping is included. Uh, you know, overhead doors, anything that we need to make that building up. And that number is based on a bid that I just. You know, we at works. We're in construction on a plant very similar to this right now, and that's what these numbers are based on. Again. You know, I don't take the absolute lowest bid because that guy may not bid on your job. I don't take the highest bid. I take, I kind of shoot for the middle because I've been through this before. If whatever number I have here and it and say three million dollars and the cost comes in at four million, we're scrambling. It's no fun. I would much rather tell you three million dollars and have it come in at two and you turn back part of the line. You know, if we don't use all of that loan, you don't have to take it. You don't pay interest on it, you pay nothing. That's why I told you, I would rather be high on my cost than be low. You only pay for what you use. It doesn't have this. 
that page of A does have it, it, similar, only yeah. it does hold it to uh, $50,000. Right. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All, of, all of the contracts, the first four pages, are the same. same. Okay. The only thing that changed was item 10 on the last page. Well, no matter what, you still have to accept C with this anyway. That's right. right. That's right. 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 Sort of right. Yes. Yes. Oh, and just <laughs> in case you really get your eyes fine-tuned here, <laughs> the cost estimate that I've used on this is a little bit smaller than the one that I gave you last time. Mel pointed out that I had two... VF, or three VFDs on your existing wells that you already had one. And so I took that out and then I had in here the testing that, uh, that we've done for the new wells. I had that in with the building part of it and I had to move that because that's not part of the construction cost. And so that got moved. But what that did is that reduced your cost. So it's less than what I gave you last time. This is a replacement. Uh, what? No, no yep. it does not. Yeah, liability. A. I take it out now, and you're installing this fifty thousand. No, no, no. 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 Oh, this one you handed out. Yeah. That was that. That, that was it. That was the original. The original. <coughs> this is the one we want to use the space to limit to the the amount of time. The other one capped at fifty thousand dollars or the cost of the engineering contract. This one here allows it. The liability is limited to the entire cost of the entire construction Are we ready for a motion? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But I have brought three copies. I just have to figure out which one is which. Okay, Pete. Oh, okay, if, as long as we have the right back page on it, my, but okay, is that the last one I sent you today?
same system that's called a cross connection. And uh, it, I've got a mark on each separate page there. Uh, and what we're wanting to do is probably get a clarification on that. If you read that where it talks service connection required, it's basically saying that you need to be hooked to the city's water. It does not say you have to use city water, but it does say you should be required if you have a water main in your area. So the question I see is that some people are going to say, well, I'm not going to use city water anymore. I'm going to drill my own well or I have an existing well. I'm going to hook it up to my house and use it as a water supply. So I think we need to, to fill in any holes here in our ordinance or uh, there are, on the last page there, it talks about there if you would have a uh, well hooked into the city, to a house that is on a city water supply, you have to put a protective device uh, to to prevent the waters from mixing. So there is a we do, we're going to provide you know water that's been chlorinated. We're also going to provide water that's when the plant is in operation, this has an overnitrate value than what some people may have in their existing wells. And we don't want that. You can see how that could happen if someone's pump has more pressure than the city's does, and it could go back into our water supply. So that's why the protective device would be needed. So uh, I talked to Don about this, and uh, I wanted to bring it before the council. We don't have to act on it tonight, but just for something for, for study and see what we want to do in that regard. As far as on the well, I know when Ned, Ned Marsh was here, he had made mention about, you know, we're probably, and we also heard at the meeting that night that, you know, some people are going to drill their own wells and not use city water. The wells that are going to be put in in the future, currently all you have to have uh, to put a, a private well in the city is use a licensed driller, licensed with the state of Kansas. I know Ned was concerned about you know, if we get the wells in and, and that's done and not, and not in a proper manner, we could add to our uh, nitrate level into the water we're trying to treat. So uh, how far do you want to go with that? You know, do you want to have, uh, if someone comes in and put a well in, do we want to have <clears throat> Ned oversee it? Do we want to, you know, have right now, there's, you know, like I say, there's no permit required or anything <coughs> using a license drill. Do we want to take a step further or two to, to control what's going on in our city as far as any new private well? It wouldn't, wouldn't affect any existing wells, but a new new well that we're going to be putting in. So, so like I say, there's no action required tonight unless someone wants to do anything. But I think it's something we need to look at and maybe uh, look at the next council meeting. Put it on full business if that's what you want to do. So I just want to present that to you. Well, could you inspect it? Now and make sure it's I, I, I really don't feel qualified as far as, you know, that's more of, a, you know, some along Ned's line or something like that. You did that or you're going to have to draw up some specifications that you could present to the driller and, you know, we just, you know, say, well, you know, that's what you need to do. But the state regulations right now state, as far as their license, go, right? Yeah, yeah, they can do it. So, uh, we really don't have any, and I'm sure the state and I talked to our uh, gentleman that came from Kansas Rural Water that, you know, the, the straight state regulations that, that regulates what you're supposed to do and the drilling is maybe not always done if you don't have someone inspect it. Or Ned pointed out that you get into, you know, certain formations that, you know, this this spec here it really isn't what you should use, you know. You really don't know until you drill it. So, uh, Yes, Tom. My concerns, you know, you got that. We did have the one well that was good water way deep. I mean, there's, but we don't know how, at what level that is. I mean, we know it's deep out there, but we don't know if it's deep on the east side of town or west side of town. You either have, you either have a somebody that has knowledge and draws up criteria as to what how deep you can go, what formations you can go into. I mean, that's the way I would prefer it if you're going to allow new wells. The other op option would be just not to allow any new water wells being drilled in the city limits, but that's, you know, that's not going to fly. So. Right. No, no, I think that would be 
completely idiotic if we can get somebody to put a private well in the irrigate their own yard. Sure. I, I, Why pay operating cost on the treat water to go through? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. But we don't want, at the same time, we don't want all these people just punching down in that good water layer. Well, I agree with that, but then also, again, if there's already state regulations, yeah, I don't think not there's no need of us stepping in and telling the state that, I mean, that's, the state regulations are usually tougher than what anybody else can. Decline on the Is there other cities that have anything out there? Um, there was some activity on the listserv a while back, and the question was who allows private wells? They had, there were several cities that don't even allow it. You know, so that was the discussion. I didn't go into anything with that discussion at that point. So. Um, I can ask out there, but I think we're kind of in a new grounds from what I can see from the activity on my listserv is that we're not the first city dealing with this, but we're one of the first. And so if you may be writing new stuff that other cities might want to use later, but um, I, I can check is what I could do, but I don't really think there's probably much out there. I guess I'd like to know, I'd like a little direction. I mean, there's no sense in us spending time looking at, at regulations or anything else if you guys have no desire to, you know, protect the water down deep. I mean, if, if, that, if that's not a concern, I, I don't know that the state has regulations on, you know, yes, the state regulates things, but they don't regulate how deep you grow up. I mean, as long as it's certified water, they can go down the right. whatever you want to go to. But, so I, I, yes, they do regulate some things. They, they regulate quantity, but I don't think they regulate the quality of water that you drill into. And that's the reason I put out that we have some kind of criteria. Uh, well, the, the way I understood Nip's main concern was the packing around the formation exactly. and that, and that that is a standard within the government or within the state of how that well is constructed. Not necessarily. I mean, look at all the wells that have been drilled. They, 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 they go in and they, they blow holes in it from the top, from the first water table to the bottom. And all that, I mean, they want to have that full draw in. But they don't regulate that. I was going to say, I was offered by an individual a few years ago to put a well down just with his own stuff, and there was, would be no regulations. Yeah, I mean, I, so that's the reason I, I, I'd like to have some criteria developed that we can at least have a, you know, we can at least have either somebody look at it or you go to a certain depth or, or whatever, that we aren't contaminating that last good water layer we right. did. Right. I guess that's my, that's my concern. But if you guys... Yeah, because if they go deep and they're pulling that... They're, yeah. And if the other water goes down, it's not, right. if it's not cemented right, then there's problems. But, right. Think about Maybe it. you want to table that till the next meeting, council, then? Okay. We're just telling you it's a problem we need to address sometime in the near future. Right. And how about the service connection required? That's the same. It's part of the same thing. It's part of the same thing, Tom. Okay. I would, I mean, all. We do have an existing ordinance that requires the backflow device on all interconnects. I don't know that all the systems have them, but there is a, there is a current yes current code that requires a backflow device if you irrigate and have a private well hooked to the same system. You do have to have a backflow prevention device. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you use city water and irrigate, you're supposed to have that anyway because you're not supposed to allow irrigation water to be sucked back into the and the public water, right. you fertilize your yard, you put chemical on your water, you know, they don't want that being sucked through your sprinklers back into your system. So you're supposed to have a backflow device right now anyway. Right. But we have never really enforced that. Um, and if, you know, we've never gone out and inspected, inspect required inspections. If you live in a larger town, uh, you have to have it inspected annually, you have to turn it in. Uh, you pay a $50 inspection fee every year or whatever the cost of that. And if you don't report it, then the city writes you up and you have to turn it off. So, I mean, 
the larger towns require that being enforced. So, but we, we've never really enforced that in the same time. But it might have to be with the new system we're putting in. Yeah. And that's a state law, I believe, isn't it? That's just not us. Yeah. Well, the KDG requires us to have the cross connection control. Cross connection control. control. And our, our code as it is kind of contradicts itself. A little bit. Yeah. It, it talks about that you can't do a KSA uh, there on the, I think it's the second page, it says, it says you can't have uh, a public uh, of water between the two systems and then later on in there it talks about you can have it if you have the proper <coughs> proper cross or back of the engine device in there. So I just, I just think we need to kind of clean it up a little bit. So we put that on hold. Thank you. Okay. The last item was a request from the uh, <coughs> members of the uh, Victorian <coughs> Tea Committee. Uh, it's in your packet requesting uh, that the Christmas decorations be put out. Uh, their theme this year uh, for the Victorian Tea is a Victorian Christmas, and their uh, event is on November 6th, so they're requesting if it be possible for the city to put up the decorations before that meeting. So uh, it doesn't take any longer to put them up then as it does later on. The only thing is they're going to be up longer, so you know, it's not tradition around here, so whatever the council chooses on that, we'll go with. I don't have a problem with that Take the same amount of time as it does later on, so we'll just do it now rather than later. So we can do that. Okay, that's all I have. Is there any questions for Mel? Thanks, Mel. Fire Department, Michael. Last Thursday, Friday, we did fire prevention at the school. We gave them rides, showed them videos, talked to them, let them. But the fourth graders showed them how to use a fire extinguisher and did some fun things, but we also uh, taught them some things, so that's all I have. Any questions from my colleagues with me? Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Police Department, Matt, do you have anything this evening? No, ma'am. Okay, I'd like to call for an executive session for... Oh, 10 minutes for with council and Don.
Necessarily exist in law, and it would be if you want to do that. I'm not going to draft it, and I'm not going to enforce it uh, because I don't think it's a good. It's not something that you want to start doing. And once you set a precedent like that, you're going to open yourself up to a full can of worms. Yeah. And that's against the advice of the chief of police. And I think you'd probably get the same opinion from the fire chief as if he was still here. So, if you want that in there, I'm not drafting it, and I'm not going to enforce it, because it is not something you want to have. I mean, I can suggest to them that, you know, that... Now, there are mutual aid agreements that we already have in existence that we signed many years ago that require us to, if we're called upon, we are required by our mutual aid agreements to go out and lend assistance. But those mutual aid agreements require us to keep at least one truck and enough firemen in town to handle the fire if one should break out here. Same way with police. We have mutual aid agreements with the county, and they're all reserve officers. So if there is an incident out there and no one can respond, and they all, they back up right now and they back and they do respond out there no matter what. But to sit there and, and have a written policy saying we are going to handle any fire out there and to handle any police call out there, I don't think really you know, anything. He just said that if he if he needed it, they'd be there. Well, I think under our mutual aid agreements, they will be there. But I don't want to have something in writing saying we are going to be there. Because then we are liable. We, that's, we are that's liable big time. We're all in tear. Well, I'm saying. Yeah. But I know. I mean, I know if if he to... saw maybe a police car drive up and down that road once in a while going to the city ponds, you know, just like maybe they are trying to do a little bit for Yeah. Me. Yeah. And, and just, and I guess it's been, and kind of like, like they've been walking and writing, but we can talk to him about that. But. Right. I mean, kind of like the other night, um, one of the officers called me and said that they heard something south of town, you know, out of the city limits, a big old boom, you know, and it, they wouldn't know if I was doing something down there. No. I said, well, why don't you go check it out? You're, you have my permission to drive out of city limits, go check it out. So he did. Went down by your guys' business and around that area and come back. Didn't find anything. But he was out of his vehicle and he heard it was sound like a huge gun going off, he said. I heard so you did too? Mm -hmm. So what it was and it was after dark. But no, that I don't have a problem with that. You know, asking the chief to, you know, drive out, come back, check things out. So it ain't gonna hurt to do that. No. No. Okay. That it is services to you, kind of thing. And that is very true. Okay. So we're satisfied with that choice? We need to you need to pass the ordinance so in one form or the other. I mean we left that Yeah, we did. We left that open. So why don't you bring that up next time? I mean if we can if we can satisfy him with an oral an oral statement without something in writing being cast in stone. Right. If, you know, that we'll make an occasional pass by there or whatever, however you want to word it. But then you need to decide on whether you're going to have a full rate out there or there were, or Greg su suggested that there be a reduced rate, recognizing the fact that he's not getting all those services. So you need to figure out which rate you're going to apply and then pass the order. Okay. So you can bring that up next time. But okay. we, we, did, we do need to still pass that over. Okay. All right. So leave that on the business, 